Hello everybody and welcome back to another Traction Track Guide on Assetto Corsa Competizione. It's now time to take a look at the latest tracks to be added to the game, starting with arguably the least exciting but most challenging, Snetterton. Snetterton is probably best known for the Scary Tree, which was actually destroyed recently by the way, and also for a couple of painfully challenging corners towards the end of the lap. For this guide I've gone with the McLaren 720S. I think it's the first time I've used the McLaren in this series, it's actually turned into a fairly strong all-rounder and it suits this type of circuit with lots of medium speed corners. The biggest issue with the Maca is its lack of ability to ride the curbs, and when I say lack of ability I don't mean it's not very good at it, what I mean is it literally has no ability in that area. Seriously, it's awful. And you'll see an example if you stick around. Anyways, on to the reason why you're here, let's take a look at the lap. Move over to the left heading into Riches, breaking between the one board and the turn in board. If they've been wiped out by someone, you can also use the orange marking on the left hand armco as your reference point. Change down to third gear and turn in, rolling off the brakes as you get closer to the corner and aiming to get two of your wheels on the inside curb. We're going for a double apex here, so let the car run out a tiny bit to the left before getting back on the power as early as possible, short shifting if necessary to get the nose of the car back in towards the inside for the second apex. Touch the white line if you can, but be careful of the curb depending on what car you've chosen. Open out your steering and use the space on the exit, including the curb and runoff area if it's required. Stay left as you charge towards the Montreal hairpin and start braking at the 2 board. Again, if the board is gone, and this one probably will be, you can also use the orange marker on the armco as a reference. This time it's on the right and is perfectly level with the 2 board. Shift all the way down to first gear, staying out wide the whole way in to make sure your line is nice and wide for the corner entry. Just as you reach the corner markers, turn in and gently ease off the brakes to get the nose in. Your technique here depends on car choice as to whether you're best to roll off the brake into the corner or use trail braking. If you can get the car slowed down enough, you can fully rotate it on a nice tight line. Be patient here and wait until you're pointing comfortably out of the corner before giving it a bootful. Shift back to the right as you head towards Palmer. Here you want to hit the brakes and turn in about level with the electronic flag tower on the left. Haul the car in relatively early here as the road kind of holds you in place. If you go in a little bit deep or too wide a line, the grip just falls away and you hemorrhage lap time. Stay in 3rd gear and aim for the mid corner apex on the inside kerb. Don't worry about abusing this particular one, it's very gentle. Unlike the McLaren. Get the power down about midway through the corner, just as you hit the apex and open up your steering like always, using the runoff area and kerb when required. The only thing to watch for here is a nasty bump where the kerb ends, which can slow you down if you hit it awkwardly. Avoid this by getting yourself back on the black stuff before the kerb ends. Stay right and hold 4th gear as you enter the braking zone for Agostini. Start braking halfway between the 2 and 1 boards. If these particular boards are gone, I'm going to be honest, it gets a little bit tricky. There are a lack of reference points, but if your eyesight at 140 miles an hour is as good as goal line technology, then you can maybe use the white marquee on the right as a reference? I don't know, it's very much clutching at straws. Shift down to first gear and begin to turn in a little bit earlier for this hairpin than the previous one. It's a little bit longer and requires more of a U-shaped line. Aim to roll smoothly around this one, carrying just enough speed to drive around the kerb without understeering wide. In a similar vein to the last hairpin, be patient on the power and make sure the car is rotated enough by the middle of the corner to get back on the power at the apex. Use the exit curb if you need to. The next one, named Hamilton, is tricky. Break just before the marshal's hut, holding third gear. It's all about precision here. Try and hit the inside curb with your front left tyre and get back on the power as you do so. Now, my corner exit on this lap proves the point that I'm always banging on about regarding the McLaren and the curbs. It sucks at them. In most other cars, using this curb on the exit wouldn't be an issue whatsoever, you would simply just glide smoothly back onto the circuit. However, in the McLaren, you have to replace your dislodged spine before the next braking zone, which can be a little bit distracting. Do feel free to try using this curb in other cars, as I say. Get back over to the left as quickly as possible and straighten up the car for the next right-hander at Oggies. Here, we really get to abuse the track limits. Brake just after you pass the turn-in boards and change down to first. Get the car turned in nice and early, and feel free to use loads of the matting on the inside of the curb. The only thing to watch for here is that you keep your left wheels on the left hand side of the white line. Not only is this matting legal, but it's also super smooth and gives you lots of grip, so the lap time benefits are sizeable. A win win all round really. Ease back onto the power as you exit, watching out for snaps of oversteer, and let the car run out to the left. Start braking for Williams before the end of the green concrete on the left, turning in almost immediately as you scrub off the speed on the way in. The key here is a good exit, so feel free to go in slightly wide aiming to cut back towards the apex on full power, just after you pass the tyre bundle in the inside. If you get it right, you should naturally run out wide on the exit and use all of the curbs, maintaining a huge amount of speed that is then carried all the way down the back straight. Take a breather as you head down the Bentley straight, drifting back to the right in preparation for two of the trickiest sections of circuit anywhere in Europe. First up is Brundle. Brake and start turning in just as you pass the one board, which is just before the start of the bridge. This corner is really going to test your ability to trail brake. You want to turn in and brake at the same time. 
but be careful not to press the brake pedal too heavily as you do so. If you brake too hard for too long, the car won't turn in properly. However, if you don't brake enough, you won't get slowed down in time. This takes practice, but once you get it right, you have mastered one of the trickiest braking zones in the country, and also the art of trail braking. In terms of your positioning, if you can, get your front left tyre on the kerb reasonably late in the corner, as this will open up the right-hander at Nelson. Just be wary that catching this kerb at the wrong angle can eventually lead to a puncture, especially in GT4s. If you get all of this right, you should be able to straighten up the wheel, flick down to first and immediately turn right, aiming to place your front right tyre on the flat kerb. Just avoid the sausage kerb at all costs. If your speed and line is right, you can get on the power nice and early, before the apex if possible, and then straighten up your steering and use the exit kerb if you need to. The bomb hole requires commitment and an early turn-in, simple as that really. If you turn in too late, the camber of the corner works against you and you just run wider and wider. If you get the nose in nice and early, it hooks you in and keeps you perfectly on line. I don't tend to brake for this corner, I just turn in after the left hand side tyre barrier ends and I coast through. Some cars of course don't like coasting, but the McLaren in particular loves it. Aim to hit the kerb mid corner and get fully back on the power as you do so. Utilise the exit kerb and stay left for a split second in order to prepare yourself for the never ending Corum kerb. Here, you have to be patient all the way through, keeping the car on line and being flexible with your inputs. A little bit like turn 1 at Shanghai. I turn in and aim to get my front right tyre over the white line fairly early in the corner. I then keep my steering lock on and lift or brake accordingly in order to hold the car in reasonably tight. If you carry too much speed, you will run wide, scrub your tyres and ruin your lap time. It's all about balancing your pedals and maintaining a nice tidy line on the inside, whilst losing as little speed as possible. You can also downshift to third when necessary to get the nose of the car back in check. The second part of the corner is all about preparing for the final left-hander. Yet again, trail braking is key. Just as the corner is coming to an end, squeeze harder on the brake pedal and change down another gear or two, trying to hold the car towards the right of the circuit. Just as you pass the last marker pull on the right, change direction and aim for the inside kerb. Exit speed is the most important thing here, so try your best to get the car slowed down enough beforehand. The only time I've ever been handed a penalty in real life was at this very corner, making that very mistake in the wet, so don't do it John. I still feel bad about that one Robert, apologies. Hit the inside flat kerb whilst avoiding the sausage and immediately get back on the power. You will likely need to use most of the matting beyond the kerb on the exit if you're carrying a good speed, but it's allowed so we're all good there. Bring the car back towards the finish line to complete your lap of Snetterton on ACC. As usual, let us now play it for you at full speed so you can get a feel for how it all links together. So there we have our lap of Snetterton. We've posted a few example laps for you guys to use as a benchmark when learning the circuit. Pro is a full potential qualifying lap from an alien, Pro-Am is a competitive lap time in most online races, whilst Am is a decent time to aim for when you're first learning the circuit. This is another place where it's better to build up things slowly than to start out too quickly. You will get very frustrated very soon if you keep missing the apexes, especially during the latter half of the lap. Start slow and chip away at it one corner at a time. Instead of a 10 second summary, I'd like to take the opportunity to hold a 10 second silence and remember the scary tree, which was sadly destroyed in Storm Chiara last year.
That's it from me. Be sure to let us know which of the British GT DLC tracks you love the most in the comments below. Subscribe to the Traction channel for more racing game content, and until next time, keep it pinned, thanks for watching, and have a great day.